We're out here on Camp Pendleton doing the uh, final demonstration of the 5G Expeditionary Advanced Base Operations Project. It's been running for about the last three years, uh, doing that in conjunction with the Marine Corps' Exercise Steel Night. We want to establish a center for the Marine Corps where we can answer all the hard questions they have about 5G technology and tactical wireless networks and also show what 5G is able to provide to the Marine Corps in terms of the flexibility and interoperability. I'm Tom Rondeau. I'm the Principal Director of Future Generation Wireless Technologies, or Future G. The Marine Corps has a very specific need to be expeditionary and to be fast and deadly. And how do we create the capabilities with this idea of passing information, sensor information, ensuring that they have situation awareness and that they can prosecute their missions effectively as the warfighters that they are. The Marine Corps, on the other hand, is, is such a great partner because they have direct needs. They know what it's like to be in the field. They get out there and they go after hard problems. This was a hard problem by ingesting new commercial technology that not even the commercial sector had really gotten their hands around for the past five years. We're now in a maturation of the 5G era, and we've been working with the Marine Corps to, to mature together. Uh, my name is Corporal Ethan Carrillo. I work at MASS-3, and my, my primary MOS is uh, 5948. 5948 is a uh, aviation radar technician. We work primarily on the Gator system. That's the Marine Corps' premier radar system. The Gator stands for uh, Ground Air Task Oriented Radar. It's an air defense surveillance system. Primarily, we're running missions in the Indo-PACOM region. We built out this system to build a test bed for the Marine Corps. So the focus for the Marine Corps is to have a test bed that they can continue on with here after this program will end here early next year. Then they can take in other 5G assets and test its capabilities, functionality, and kind of prove out its usefulness for the warfighter. About four, four and a half years ago, Michael Dell was working with the State Department on some of the need to return 5G capability to the United States. Today, if you want to buy commercial 5G, you're either buying it from Finland, Sweden, South Korea, or China. There's no U.S large-scale vendor today and so Michael Dell had talked about the commitment to bring 5G and technology back to the United States and so for the last four and a half years I've been working with the team to develop it completely within the United States and North America as a solution that we could natively support. For the government the essence and for the warfighters to have flexibility. You might have different frequencies, you might have different equipment, the mission may need different things and no one vendor can do all of it reliably and cost effectively so I think Open RAN gives the DOD an option to be able to pick the best solution for the best use case and, and for the mission and being able to interchange vendors is important to not get locked into one vendor for cost as well as for usability. You're never really done with technology development and innovation so my advice to the Marine Corps would be take productized capabilities that are ruggedized and are have been validated and, and worthy of being in the hands of our operators uh, but always keep your eye towards the future and future innovations that will support our operating concepts. We're going to fight with prototypes and we're going to sustain with programs of record. The, a tank was a prototype, right? The Gatling gun was a prototype. Uh, the A-10 was a prototype. We fought and won with prototypes throughout our military history. This is no different. And as much about the people as it is about the equipment itself. We want a test bed, sure, the, the test 5G. We want to be able to answer questions like, how is this secure? How is it resilient against jamming and spoofing? How does it integrate with other Marine Corps comm systems today without stepping on other Marine Corps comm systems? And what I think that they need to do in the future is I think they need to integrate the Fleet Marine Force into their testing, into their evaluation, and into their feedback loop. 